Why will you die, O house of Israel? Why are you eating and living in a way that is not according to my word, which is bringing death upon yourself? Gospel of Hell 2006 has been put together that you can understand God's biblical principle. We use the word in the flyer, in the, in the brochure, biblical secrets of hell. You know why they're biblical secrets? Because most people don't know about them. God had this word written for thousands of years. It's this, you know, this is the most popular book. This is one of the best sellers in the world. And all the principles we're talking about are found in here. So is it really a secret? It's a secret to you, maybe, but it's not a secret. God has revealed. This is, the, this is a revelation of truth. We need to understand God's plan for us that we would not kill ourselves prematurely. We want to go to God's word and look at some principles from his holy word. We're going to open the word of God tonight and look at a topic called the gospel of hell. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we go into God's word tonight to understand how disease comes and God's plan to deal with it. Father, we pray tonight for the Holy Spirit's power again to help us, to energize our mind. There are people in this room tonight that have come because they believe that God can heal them of their diseases, not only through a divine touch or some supernatural plan, but God wants to educate the mind. He wants to lead us and guide us into the truth that the truth can make us free. He wants to bring us the abundance of peace and truth that we may have the healing and cure that he desires to give us. Lord, even now we pray that you would anoint our minds as we open your anointed word and that you would give us the Holy Spirit that we would understand because spiritual things are spiritual discernment. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The book of Exodus tonight, Exodus the 15th chapter, a very familiar passage of scripture. Exodus 15, there is a promise. Exodus 15 and verse 26. Exodus 15 and verse 26. Now last night when we were together, we looked at a scripture as we turned to Exodus 15 and verse 26. We looked at a scripture last night and we found, as we turned to Exodus 15 and verse 26, we found out in the book of Proverbs 18, 21, Proverbs 18, 21 told us that death and life are in the power of what? Who remembers? The power of the tongue. And he that loveth it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, if you love life, then you will eat according to the principles of life, the life and the truth that God has given in his word, the natural living, the holy living that God has given, which promotes life. You know that holiness is health? and health is holiness. When God spoke about holiness to the children of Israel, he told them to wash your bodies, wash your clothes, wash the camp, keep it clean, eat a certain way, live a certain way, and refrain from these things which are sinful, which also are health destroying, and I will be your God, and I will come in the midst of you. But if you don't, he said, I cannot come in the midst of you because I will come in to destroy you as I did the heathen. The heathen did not follow these principles. They did not keep their bodies and their environs in a certain way. They committed abominable, sinful practices and even neglectful acts that caused disease to run rampant. And God came in plagues and in judgments against them. God said to his people he would do the same thing unless they follow his will, his holy plan of living. Exodus 15, 26 says this. Exodus 15, 26, it says, and, if, and said, if thou wilt diligently, diligently, pardon me, Exodus 15, 26, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and his statutes, and keep all his statutes, rather, I will put none of these, what? I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Does it, does it say here, as we look at this passage, that the Egyptians had certain diseases. Did it say that? Look at it again. Look at it again. Let's read it one more time. God said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases. In other words, there were certain diseases. He didn't say all diseases. These diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon who? The Egyptians, for I am the Lord that does what? So were there certain disease that the Egyptians had? Yes or no? And that God said that he would protect the people of God from these diseases through a certain procedure, certain method. Yes or no? Yes. That certain procedure, did he say that it was laying on of hands? 
Did he say that it was some type of miracle? He said, if you would hearken, that means to listen, that you may obey, listen to the voice of the Lord thy God, in other words, his words, and do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments. So there were commandments, there were statutes, if you will, there were principles, there were teachings that God spoke by his own mouth, that if the people of God would follow those principles, he said that he would keep them from certain diseases that the Egyptians had, because he was, the, he was Jehovah Rapha, the great mender or the great physician. He was the God that would heal them. God says in the word of God that there are principles by which he wants to heal us. Yes, Jesus came and miraculously healed the sick by his word, but his spoken word and his written word are the same thing. What God spoke, what Jesus spoke, guess what happened to it? They wrote it down. It's the same word. As we follow his word, when we read the word of God, we are as verily listening to the voice of Christ as if he was speaking to us even now. When he says, peace be still, if by faith you receive that, guess what you have? You have that peace. Thy faith, Jesus said, has made thee whole. When Jesus spoke his word, was everyone healed? The Bible says some people were not healed because they didn't have faith. So the word had power, Jesus had power, but he said, thy faith has made thee whole. Do you have faith that God's principles can do the same thing for you that it did for the children of Israel? Tonight, if you do, you can have freedom from the disease. As a matter of fact, let's see what these diseases are before we go into our topic. We want to see these diseases so we see what we're being freed from. The book of Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Notice what it says here. Still in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 28. God picks up the story in Deuteronomy 28. He first said in Exodus 15, 26, if you will do these things, if you will keep my commandments and my statutes, I will do this. I will keep you from these diseases that the Egyptians had. But in Deuteronomy 28, he comes back and says, if you will not hearken and you will not do, then something's going to happen. Now, brothers and sisters, if he said that there were certain commandments and statutes that dealt with health, that meant God spoke by his own mouth health laws, health commandments, health principles that keep us from disease. That if we have disease, it will take, a, take us out of the area where we have disease or remove disease from us. And it would make us as opposed to the world or the Egyptians, those that are around that didn't know God, a healthy people. Now, notice what it says in Deuteronomy 28 when he starts talking about these diseases that the Egyptians had. And let's see if we have these things today. 15, Exodus, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. And if you're there, say amen. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these what? All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You know what a curse is? A curse is what comes upon you when you don't obey the word of God. We have a spiritualistic type of understanding of what a curse is, as if it's just some kind of magic. Curses come when we do not obey God's word. The curse causeless, Proverbs said, the curse causeless shall not come. If we know God's will, if we accept Christ as our personal Savior and walk in his will, God is going to bless us. We have blessings and curses. He says to choose which one you want. Because if we don't walk in God's way and walk in his blessings, we automatically receive the curses. The world has all the various curses falling upon them because they don't understand and accept the plan and the will of God. Let's see what these curses are that came upon the people for not obeying God's law. Look at verse 22. Verse 22. Are we there? It says, the Lord shall smite thee. In other words, the Lord is going to allow this to happen because you're not walking in his way. It's out there. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption. That word means tuberculosis. Consumption is tuberculosis, even back then. So what was one of the diseases the Egyptians had? Tuberculosis. We're going to find a text later on to show you that all these were Egyptian diseases. Tuberculosis. Going on with a fever, with an inflammation. Do we see those things today? Extreme burning. It goes on to talk about mildew or fungal, different types of fungal problems that would come up because of transgressing or going against God's law. It says in verse 27, the law will smite thee. Verse 27, with the botch of Eden. Those are tumors. Go to your Bible dictionary. All this is right there. 
tumors like cancer, the bodies of Egypt, and with the emeralds. Emeralds are hemorrhoids, another uh, circulatory disease. With the scab, with the itch, wherefore thou cannot be healed. Verse 28, the Lord will smite thee with madness, that's insanity, and blindness, and what? Heart problems, panic attack, heart attack. Do we see those things today? We certainly do. Look, drop your eyes down to verse 34. Verse 34 says, Thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Verse 35, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and the legs, that's on the joints, joint problems, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and with a sore box that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. It goes on and on with all these various diseases and ailments that would come from not following the commandments and principles and laws of health that God had given. In verse 58, notice what it says. Verse 58 of the same chapter. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 58. Deuteronomy 28, 58, it says, If thou wilt not, are we there? Say amen if you're there. Deuteronomy 28, 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name the Lord thy God, the Lord will make thy plagues, that's diseases, wonderful. He allowed it to happen. And the plagues of thy seed, that means even your children would have it as well. This is what you, we, when we, you know, we look at the word of God. Let's stop there for a second. When we look at the Ten Commandments, God says the children to the third and fourth generation will feel the effects of transgressing God's law. We know today that through heredity, through DNA, things are passed on to children. Now, God said that years before that any scientist even thought about that. But to the third and fourth generation, God says, the iniquity of the fathers will rest upon the children. Not that the children have sinned, but the effects of their sinful life is passed on. God said here in verse 59 that not only would they have terrible plagues and, and disease because of transgressing God's law, but even their seed, their children would have these different illnesses. Children or, or juvenile or infant diseases. It says even great plagues and of long continuance, a long time, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the disease of where? Of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Brothers and sisters, is that what we want? God has given us the promise that if we would understand, we have to know where they are, if we would learn and obey and hearken his principles, his commandments, his, his statutes when it comes to principles of health, if we would understand his law of life and liberty and love and holiness and happiness, then we would not have these diseases. God would be able to heal us. He would be the great physician to us. Tonight, we want to look at this principle of what is man or the gospel of help. Look at the book of Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. When you look at the sin and disease that's coming to this world, why would God even desire to do anything for man? Why would God waste his time when we have fallen so far? The question is asked, like we asked the question last night, in the book of Psalms, right in the middle of your Bible is the book of Psalms, and there's different divisions inside there. Look at the Psalms, the 8th chapter. Psalms chapter 8. Psalms, the 8th chapter. And notice the question is posed here by the psalmist. Psalms, the 8th chapter. And we're going to begin about verse 3, I believe it is. Psalms chapter 8. Psalms 8 and verse 3. And if you have that, please say amen. Psalm, the 8th division and verse 3. If you're there, say amen again. David said, when I consider thy heavens. In other words, he looked at the stars and how vast the stars were and how great and how wonderful they were. When I consider thy heavens... The work of thy finger, speaking of God now, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? In other words, when we look at all the creation of God, the sun, the moon, and stars, and how vast they are, do you know that when we look at the stars, that those stars are suns, and sometimes those suns are even greater and larger and greater magnitude than the, star, the sun in our galaxy? Our sun is so hot, even though it's millions of miles away, it warms our planet and keeps us in health. But the suns that we see out there, we don't even know those stars are suns. All those little stars are suns, sometimes a hundred times bigger than our sun. And there are planets around those stars, and it goes out vastly. And David said when he looked at these things, he said, well, what is man? Why are you even considered with man? Why do you 
try to visit and minister to him and try to help him when you have all this universe, all these planets, all these other worlds? Why are you considering man? The gospel answers that question, but tonight we want to look at the gospel of health and see what is man. The answer to what is man gives the answer to how the gospel of health can be understood by us and how we can see how God has planned for us to have health and not death. Let's look at how man was created by God that we may answer the question tonight, what is man? Look at the book of Genesis as we start this journey tonight. Genesis, the second chapter. Let's look at what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 2. On our board here, we see a diagram. We see a tree here, and we're talking about out in the garden here. We see a tree, we see some grass. We see Adam here laying in the dust. We see Adam here standing up. And we're looking at Genesis 2 7, and we want to see when God first created man. Genesis 2 7 gives us the understanding of what happened when God created man. Genesis 2 and verse 7. If you're there, say amen again. And I hope you're taking notes because I'm going to give a lot of scriptures tonight explaining the principles of how man was created and why these natural foods are best for our diet and our healing because they were made from what God made man from. And they were designed to do a certain work in his body, which, if you understand it correctly, can give you health or restore your health. Genesis 2 and verse 7 says this. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the what? Of the what of the ground? the dust of the ground, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man what? Man became a living soul. Man had life. God breathed into him breath, and then man became a living person. <clears throat> here we see a picture of man here lying down. God formed him completely out of the dust. Now the Bible says the dust of the ground. In other words, we can say it's the soil or the earth, but he was formed from the dust of the ground. You know, the dust is not a large piece of soil or large clumps of soil. It is the smallest part. Dust is very, very small. The smallest part of this matter we call soil. If you understand that this dust or this soil is coming from the dust of the soil, then it's not just the, the earth itself. It's talking about even the elements of the small, the smallest part of the soil. Elements are things like calcium, magnesium, phosphorus. God made man from the elements. Now these elements are found in the soil. God made him from the soil. God took this soil or this, these elements, this dust, and he breathed into it. Now this breathing into the man, nostril of man, Job says that that was air. He breathed air into his nostrils. That's Job 31. But we want to see that these elements and this air had another component. There are three components we're seeing here when we talk about health, when we talk about the composition of man. And it's vital that you understand this because if you want to understand how to truly do the biblical principles of natural healing, you must understand the principles that God explains. If we don't understand God's statutes and his commandments, then God cannot clearly, easily remove disease from us. It's a principle. There's principles that God has. We see elements from the soil. We see air. God breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life. And we still breathe today, don't we? And there was a third component that's not easily seen. Why? Because when we see this dust or this earth, when we look at another prophet, another prophet gives a clear understanding of what this dust or this earth was. Let's look at that in the book of Job. Hold your finger there in the book of Genesis and look at the book of Job. Job, the 33rd division, or 33rd chapter, Job 33 and verse 6. What chapter are we looking for? Job 33. Let's look at that very, very quickly. Job 33, right before the book of Psalms, you have the book of Job. Job, the 33rd chapter, and verse 6. Let's look at the Bible text here and see the prophet Job speaks of the creation of man, and in speaking of the creation of man, he talks about the fact that man was not only made from the dust, but what, what more specifically was man made from when God made him in the beginning. Job 33 and verse 6. Let's look at it, see, see what it says there. Job 33 and verse 6. Say amen if you got that. Job says, Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I am also formed, how? Out of what? Okay, let's see if this is, what, this is a true statement. One more text. Job, the 10th chapter. 
Job 10 and verse 9. Job 10 and verse 9. Job said he was not just from the dust, but actually from the clay. Man was made from the clay. Not just dust, not just the elements, but man was made from the clay. Job 10 and verse 9. The Bible says this. Job 10 and verse 9. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the what? Clay, and wilt thou bring me into what? Job recognized that man was made from the dust. God said that, but when he in prophetic vision saw the creation of man, he had to comment that man was made from the clay. Clay is nothing more than dirt or soil or highly rich element soil that has a component in there that you know what it is. What's, what's, what's inside clay that's not generally inside soil as much? Water. Water. So when we talk about an equation here, we see that God had air, water, and the nutrients of the soil, or we'll put elements here. If you're writing notes, you want to put that down. Three things, air, water, and nutrients. Air, water, and nutrients. Now, do you know that this is a divine equation. This is what God made man from originally, and this is, the, this is the foundation of health. Without air, water, and nutrients, you will die. God designed in the beginning when he made man that man would live for a certain amount of time. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll give you a text for that. Look at the book of Ecclesiastes. Psalms, right? The book of Job is Psalms. Then you have Proverbs. Then you have a book called Ecclesiastes. Look at Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Ecclesiastes, because God made man and he combined this earth or this, these elements of the soil, all these different chemicals, if you will, all these iron, the calcium, the magnesium. He combined that with water and breathed into it and man became a living soul. Air, water, and nutrients composed man at the beginning. And in Ecclesiastes 3, beginning with verse 14, notice what it says here. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 14, the Bible says, say amen if you have that. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 14 says, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be how long? How long did God want man to live? Did God intend for man to die? The wages of sin is death. God never intended for man to sin. God made man to be in a perfect environment a beautiful environment, and to live forever. He says, I know whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be what? Put to it, nor anything what? Taken from it, and God doeth that the men should do what? Let's look at that very quickly. We found out that air, water, and nutrients, or the elements of the soil, composed man at the beginning. This is the foundation of hell. The Bible says God did this, that man would live forever. And he says, when God does something, nothing can be put to it, or anything taken from it. Now, when you have a body, and all of us have bodies here, <clears throat> if you try and take anything away from that equation, if you try and take anything away from that original equation, it equals disease and death. If you do not have oxygen, if you don't get the proper air that you need day by day, or even for a period of time, you will what? You will die quickly. The quickest, the, the most abundant thing your body needs is oxygen, is air. Then, if you do not get water, or if you don't drink water, how many, now don't raise your hand, but think in your mind, how many of you do not drink water at all? Or drink a little bit, and your body has, was made with a certain amount of water that must be maintained and replenished daily, hourly. But we don't drink water at all. We don't replenish and keep the level of water in our body, which is equal to a level of health. The level of fresh, open, vibrant air that we have is equal to our level of health. The lack of it is death and sickness. The level of water in our body, if it's maintained and replenished continually, it equals a level of health. The less water you have, the less your health. The lower your immune system, the, the problem with your skin and different parts of your organs is directly proportional to the amount of water that's in your body. And if you don't get the nutrition that you need, if you don't get the oxygen, it's asphyxiation. If you don't get the water, dehydration. If you don't get the nutrients, malnutrition. On any level, 
your health is directly proportional to your ability to follow the principles that God laid in his word to maintain what God has done. Christianity is maintaining a relationship, is, is receiving Christ and maintaining a relationship with him. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Do you have rest before you know Christ? No. Do you find rest when you receive Christ? Yes. When you receive Christ, then he says, abide in me. For without me, you can do nothing. Christianity is receiving God's blessing, God's grace, God's gift, and maintaining it. God gave Adam a body, and it was made in a certain way, and he gave him principles to maintain what God had done. Daily water drinking, bathing, eating certain foods, it was all a part of following God's plan, holiness. If we take anything from God's plan, we will die. If we try and put anything to God's plan, guess what happens? We'll die. You know, Revelation said we cannot add or take away from the book. Well, we can't add or take away to this book either called the human body. If you try and add anything, you know, you, you breathe with your, with your mouth and with your nose, right? You take in oxygen, right? What if you say, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take in some cigarette smoke, some marijuana, some different type of, you know, crack cocaine. I'm going to take that in. What's going to happen to your body very soon? You will have disease and maybe you'll immediately die. If you try and add something to this equation that God didn't originally have here, then you're going to have disease. If you try and add something to your body that's not a nutrient, that's not in the original elemental structure of what God formed man from, it's not falling under the, the category of potassium, magnesium, and so on, in the way that God intended for you to have, then you are adding a poison to your body. If it's not fresh air in the way God, if it's something added to the air or something that should not be there, it's a poison. If it's not pure water, it is a poison. If I take a glass of water and put a little drop, it's a very a microgram of arsenic in there, is it still water? What is it? Why is that? Now, isn't, just a little bit won't hurt you, right? Because people always say, oh, just a little bit. Oh, a little bit's not going to hurt that little kid. Just give him this, give him that, because just a little bit's not going to hurt them. And they give that to him three times a day for 21 years, and then when they're getting ready to come out of college or what have you, they have all these problems and diseases, and you're praying and asking God to remove this disease, when back here, when he was born, God tried to show you the principles of correct nutrition. Your habits are going to cause you and your family to live or to die. Remember we talked about in Proverbs 18? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and he that loveth it shall eat the fruit thereof. We want to understand and know what life is because when we look at this divine equation, God designed for man to have life. This understanding of what is man gives us the foundation. If we want to have health right now, if you want to take someone that is sick and to get them into a condition where they have better health, what's the first thing you should start looking at?